Looking at assessing existing buildings for ventilation, take it always right back to the basics. We need to understand how it works and what it's for. Most of the time our buildings are ventilated by the wind. But of course the problem with the wind is that actually air speed is actually very damaging to all stock and particularly young calves. And what we have here in this building is a, is, is a set of cues, if you like, that suggest that the building can be well ventilated by the wind, but relatively well protected. So up here we have that space board, um, which is a good cladding to have on the side of the building, but not on the prevailing wind side, because it actually doesn't keep the rain out. But generally, the wind can get at this building all the way around. And then on the windward side, which is over here, then we have solid doors to about two meters height, which will give total protection. But above it, essentially, we've got fabric, which lets the wind through, but drops the airspeed. As well, at the bottom of the doors, um, we have rubber strips, which eliminates a draft. And that's, again, equally essential. We, won't, we need the ventilation, but we don't want the airspeed. The kind of things that we might look out for in a building is um, whether there's signs of inadequate ventilation. So typically in, in older buildings, we might see um, moisture or signs of moisture in the roof, um, on the woodwork, and also cobwebs. It's a good way of determining whether some parts of the buildings are well ventilated and others are not. Yeah, so this, this is a pretty good building and they've covered a lot of the options. Um, very, very well. The question is, of course, we don't all have one of these. What can we do about it? Um, the first thing is, in, in, in some ways, is, is to do all the other things as well as we could. If the system is under pressure, we need to sort of work out what else is contributing to the problem of poor growth or ill health. So one area to go is, is to reduce the stocking density. Or even uh, one of the things we recommend to people is if the building is actually having a big impact, then possibly there's a cart shed or a machinery shed which would be better to put the animals in anyway. And obviously at certain times of the year, sort of from, from uh, April, May through to September, October, then putting them in something very simple outside can drop the pressure. Then you do all the other things. You absolutely need to ramp up hygiene, the way that we clean buildings. Um, and also to control moisture. So maybe there are times of the year where you need to add more bedding or you need to put sawdust on the floor um, and, and really take a look at all the other pressures on the animal if the ventilation of the building is intrinsically weak. And we can use smoke bombs. The good thing about the smoke bomb is we can use it for three separate jobs. One, if we let off the smoke and it doesn't go away, we know we don't have enough ventilation. Number two, if we let off the smoke bomb and it's gone straight out the door in five seconds, we know we have too much air speed. And then the third area where it's quite useful for ventilation or an understanding is where you have a complex of buildings. You can see perhaps if you let off smoke that actually smoke is going from one area with maybe perhaps older cattle to younger cattle or vice versa. So it's a very good way of visualising where air is driven between buildings and where you might be getting contamination going from one building to another. And once we get away from younger cattle, in theory it gets easier because we can then start to assess buildings not only on how the wind-driven ventilation works and sort of where it gets in around the building and how much protection there are from surrounding structures. But absolutely essential, the fine part of the building design is whether it has uh, enough hole in the roof and enough hole in the side walls for the stack effect to work. But it's absolutely essential for the ventilation to work all the time that when the wind speed drops, the, you can then use the heat and energy from the cattle, warm air will rise. If there's a big enough hole in the roof, as there is here, then for all the hot air that leaves the building, we will drag in fresh air too. If that can't occur for any reason, then we have to refer, like we do with the calves, to mechanical ventilation. And over here, there's a series of fans which are actually, weak. they come into play either when the wind speed drops or in a system like this that in the summer where you have a lot of cattle 
um, a lot of growth, a lot of energy. Actually, these big fans, their main function is to increase air speed across the back of the cattle, makes the cattle effectively cooler at the same temperature. They don't stop eating, they keep growing and everybody wins.